Alright, here's a little something you might want to pay attention to if you're swapping dashes in your Miata. We just realized this, we were about to put the new dash in Eric's car, but we realized his old dash still had his original VIN plate on it. So they're riveted on, so we're just going to drill these rivets out and re-rivet it onto the new dash that's going in the car. That way the VIN plate will be correct. When we first got this car, I guess when Eric was driving it, he noticed that the turn signals weren't automatically turning off when you made turns and stuff, and was there anything else that wasn't working? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the horn? Yeah, maybe the horn. Okay. But I think it was just unplugged. Either way, issue with the clock spring. Now that we've got all this apart, we can see on these NA clock springs, I'll show a close up, but there's supposed to be a plastic tab on either side of this that interfaces with the back of the steering wheel. That way it knows when to turn off your turn signals and stuff like that. And rather than spending $100 on a new clock spring for this, we're gonna see if we can try and fix this one. And so then, then once these tabs are actually here, they drill or they go into these um, holes. So these two big ones. Um, this is an NB wheel that's been modified to fit an NA. So one of these holes, I don't remember which one it was, but I drilled, I drilled out however many years ago so that it would work. Cause um, it, it needs to, basically with these two posts, they need to go into these two holes. And these posts are gone. So like Alex was saying, it doesn't work. All right. And so the idea we have is to use either some kind of like panel bond or whatever we're, whatever we have um, to attach this piece, right? We're gonna cut these up a little bit. These, um, these are just your standard plastic clips. We found one that looked thick enough up here at the end. And all we're gonna do is try to panel bond them or glue them to these spots here. So that when we put all this together, we'll have posts that'll stick into these holes. So trying to get the plastic a little bit scuffed up with some sandpaper. Hopefully we get a nice strong bond with the glue. We have this 3M panel bond, which is probably overkill, but I had it here, so we're gonna use that. Uh, JB Weld would probably work really well for something like this. <laughs> Basically, since uh, this, the surface isn't, you know, exactly straight up and down because um, the tabs were broken off. We've concocted a few <laughs> braces for these uh, pieces of plastic we have, you know, adhering to this. So hopefully it stays in place long enough and it'll hold, hopefully. All right, before we wrap this video up, we've got to get you up to date here. We're pretty much going to almost complete this interior before this video is done. So. Eric the other day scored on some nice interior parts. So basically full brand new unused carpet set and uh, a set of NB surfboard seats that are in extremely mint condition. Like they basically look brand new. So as you saw our little clock spring fix, steering wheels back in, dashed in. So now we're gonna throw the carpet in and the seats. And then that just leaves us with not a whole lot, door panels. We're gonna take it all the way out or just lift it? We're gonna need to take it all the way out. No! Yes. Why? We're gonna reluctantly fully pull the dash back out so we can put this carpet in the right way. No! So we're getting this carpet kit all laid out and basically have to cut holes for everything. Seat belts, um, 
e-brake, shifter, all that sort of stuff. So that's what we're doing right now, just cutting and kind of fitting loosely and seeing how it goes. Got that one side tucked underneath the kick panel. So I think that's our plan. We're just gonna kind of get it fitting good, anchor it on the sides, and then we're gonna go from there. I think ultimately we're gonna use some 3M fabric glue to really tack it down. That's what I did on my carpet install. If you missed that video, link up above. And also something I learned from that is when we go to cut these holes for seat belts and things like that, don't be afraid to cut kind of big cause you're never gonna see it. Um, whatever you're putting through there is most likely gonna fully cover that up. And I started really small on mine. It was really hard to get the bolts started. So after that, I ended up opening them up a lot more. And so like all this stuff down on the floor, seats are gonna cover all this. You're never gonna see any of that seatbelt stuff. So we'll show that when we get to it, but just wanted to add that little bit. All right, and that is pretty much where we're gonna wrap this one up. The car basically has a full interior now, minus a couple of finishing touches that we're gonna do in the very next video. So stay tuned for all of that. If you have any questions about what we did today, make sure to leave a comment down below. 
If you enjoyed this, make sure to drop a like. But as always, thank you for watching. Have an awesome week, and we'll see you in the next one. Whoa.